Hey guys, Mish here, and today I wanted to talk to you about stress because all of us have experienced stress in some way or another at some time in our lives, and I wanted to give you some science-based remedies to deal with stress. And regardless how stressed out we feel at any given moment, we could all benefit from knowing some tricks to lower it when we need to. Whether you want to reduce how much you react to a stressor when something happens, like for example, if you want to reduce how stressed out you get when you have to take a test, or if you want to reduce your chronic levels of stress if you're just constantly exhausted from stress, for example. And I first started looking into this because I was actually digging around for things to help with my own stress because grad school has just gotten more and more stressful the more years I've gotten into it. And you guys voted on Instagram for me to do a full video on this. So I went and found a bunch of other possible food, herb, and supplement remedies and made a pretty comprehensive list here based on scientific studies. So first I'm just going to give you a little background about stress and then I'm going to go through the seven remedies and just really briefly describe what studies found about those remedies. So like how much you should take, how much it can help, what kinds of symptoms it can help with. And in addition to the science, which is the most important part, I'll also give you just some brief personal experiences for the things I've tried. And then after going through the remedies, I will give you my top recommendations for which ones you should start off with or which ones you should take for your different symptoms. And now just for a little background on stress, the main stress hormone that people talk about that you've probably seen before is cortisol. And this is essentially what your body produces in response to stress. It's a lot more complicated than that. I actually study stress. The easiest story to focus on is just that cortisol, represents how stressed out you are. And having elevated cortisol can cause a lot of bad things like weight gain, insulin resistance that could lead to diabetes, autoimmune disorders and inflammation, depression symptoms, anemia, just a lot of bad stuff. So you do not want a bunch of cortisol in your system. You do not want to be stressed out all the time. You just want to be reducing your stress as much as possible if you want to have ideal health and brain function. And just one more note that could help you get the most out of these remedies. I am going to do a full list of supplements slash food slash herbs that are my recommendations for each of these remedies. So like the specific brands that are generally shown to work by independent testing labs. So I'm going to add a bunch of links both in the YouTube caption below and in the blog post with all the study links. Okay, moving on, we are now going to get to the remedies. So thank you for your patience. The first remedy I will be talking about is a cool little plant from the mint family called lemon balm. This is actually a sprig I took from my garden. So this is what it looks like. And I'm starting with a really cool one here because this is one of the few things that's been found to reduce stress with one dose. So like for example, if you take this, whether it's in a supplement or in a tea, before you have a big test, it will reduce your stress during the test is what the studies suggest. One study on this found that a single 600 milligram dose of lemon balm in a capsule reduced people's stress when they were taking a really hard cognitive test. So directly applicable to you students out there who are experiencing a lot of stress. I remember those good old days when I had to take tests, not fun. They found that lemon balm made people have a better mood, so they had less bad mood effects from the stressful task, and they reported feeling more calm and alert. Another study found that when people were doing a really hard multitasking task, like doing a ton of things at once, that was really stressful, when they had a tea made of lemon balm before the task, they reported feeling less anxiety and they had less cortisol release. So they had less of this bad stress hormone in their system thanks to a little bit of lemon balm tea. And what's cool about this one is it works as both a supplement and a tea. So if you're into tea like I am, you can make a really fun minty lemon-ish tasting tea with this. I love iced teas, it's really refreshing. Um, I actually grow this in my garden, it's super easy to grow. Like, check it out. Isn't that a cute plant? And if you just wanna buy lemon balm tea, I found a super cheap one. That you can try if you're interested just check the links below and it's also available as a supplement which is just super easy to take because you don't even have to think about it or taste anything so that is my first remedy suggestion that has some really good scientific backing the second remedy i have for you guys is something that you probably have had a lot of already in your life so not as out there as lemon balm might be and that is black tea a study found that six weeks of drinking black tea improved people's cortisol responses so they had less cortisol and more relaxation after a really hard cognitive task, like a test. And interestingly, the placebo group that they compared the tea group to actually had a caffeinated placebo. So it's not just caffeine that helps, it's actually something in tea. And researchers think that the reason that tea helps is because of flavonoids in there that can do good things for your brain. And this remedy is actually kind of a bonus remedy because I have two different kinds of tea in here. So there's one study showing that black tea is helpful, 
which isn't a lot, but there's a ton of studies showing that green tea is really good for stress. And the part of green tea that's so good for stress is an amino acid called L-theanine, which you may have heard before because it's getting a lot of buzz because of how good it is for you. And there's a lot of studies suggesting that L-theanine, whether it's in green tea or supplements, can reduce your stress quite a bit. In a huge group of 40,000 people, researchers found that drinking more tea was associated with less psychological distress. But this is not a placebo-controlled study, but it's just a nice first look at what might happen with green tea. One study done on students actually during a stressful time found that L-theanine reduced biological indications of stress, so like essentially the biological thing that indicates that you're kind of wigging out in your blood, and also how stressed out they felt. And a big review of 49 studies found that 200 milligrams of L-theanine improved calmness, made people feel more relaxed and reduce tension. So based on these studies, it looks like it might be worth swapping out your coffee for tea. And that's actually what I've done over the last few months. And I definitely think it's helped a lot. So I went from coffee in the morning, coffee in the afternoon to a black tea in the morning and a green tea in the afternoon. And sometimes I have a matcha latte for breakfast, which is green tea powder and it's really delicious. And you probably heard of it because now it's being served at a ton of coffee shops, but that's green tea too. So if you like matcha lattes, you are in luck because it might help you feel more relaxed. And if you're not into tea, you can buy L-theanine as a supplement, which based on the studies might actually be better because there's some evidence that caffeine can actually interfere with the good effects of green tea on your stress. So L-theanine seems like it actually works better if it's not combined with caffeine, but you should take it however you want to. So good news, friends, because remedy number three is something you probably want to eat more of anyway, and that is chocolate. These are just cacao, but any kind of chocolate will do as long as it's dark chocolate. The darker the chocolate, the better. And generally, good quality dark chocolate does not have milk because milk is just a filler. So old common sense slash personal wisdom has probably told you that chocolate does good things for stress, but it's nice that now there are some studies coming out on it. And so what's cool about chocolate is that like lemon balm, it seems to work with just one dose. Two different studies found that giving people about 300 calories of chocolate before a really stressful speech reduced their cortisol responses, so they had lower stress hormones, and they had less epinephrine, which is a neurotransmitter that's related to being in fight or flight mode, essentially. And it also reduced a bunch of inflammatory markers. So it lowered inflammation that can result from stress, and cortisol, and then epinephrine. I'm hoping some studies will come out soon that actually shows how participants feel in response to the chocolate, but this is pretty good evidence so far. And good news for men, since I know commonly people think that just women benefit from chocolate for some reason, but one of these studies was actually done just in men. So seems to work for everyone. The next three remedies I have for you are called adaptogens. And these are generally plants that can help regulate your stress responses via the HPA axis. So it pretty much helps your body decide how to respond to stressors in a better way that isn't as unhealthy. They can help reduce your responses to that stress. First one I have for you is called ashwagandha, which you may have heard of before because it's a pretty popular one. And this is a cool little plant that I'm also growing, actually. This is a well-known Ayurvedic remedy, so it has a lot of history to it, but now we actually have some scientific studies, which is nice to have some good empirical evidence for whether or not it actually works. And at least two studies have found that 300 milligrams of ashwagandha twice daily can help with a lot of different stress symptoms and lowering your cortisol. And another study gave some nice numbers on that. So they saw big decreases at four weeks and also at eight weeks, they found that cortisol was lowered by 22% and reported symptoms of stress was lowered by 32%. And so ashwagandha is available in supplement form. So you just take a capsule every day. And the next one is a supplement that actually can help with some of the bad side effects of stress. So rather than targeting stress itself per se, it can help you feel less exhausted as a result of stress. Because if you're anything like me, if you've had a long stressful day of work, you probably just want to do nothing but flop on the couch and be a zombie for the rest of the day, if not week. And a supplement called Rhodiola rosea can help with that. And that's a flowering plant that is apparently used as ground cover a lot. One study found that in night shift doctors, Rhodiola rosea helped them do better on cognitive tasks. So they were able to focus more and they had better memory. Another study looked at students during a stressful examination period and found that after 20 days of taking rhodiola rosea, students reported having better general well-being, so just feeling better overall, and less mental fatigue, and it even helped with their physical fatigue, so their body actually felt less tired. And another study looked at people who 
had stress-related fatigue, like really badly, they called it burnout syndrome, and they found that rhodiola rosea reduced cortisol and helped with mental fatigue in these people. The next adaptogen and sixth overall remedy I have for you is one that I love. It's tulsi, or holy basil. So I had no idea what this was, but then my gardening friend recommended I grow it because it is the most amazing smelling thing in the world. Like literally, they smell like blueberries very strongly. There's a lot of hype around holy basil in a lot of traditional medicines because it does a lot of good things for you. One study looking at Tulsi found that people who were taking it reported a 40% reduction in stress symptoms compared to placebo group. And so they reported having less symptoms of stress like exhaustion and sleep problems and forgetfulness and reported feeling less stressed out in general. Another study found that taking it for 60 days reduced symptoms of anxiety and depression and stress. So it seems like it can do a lot of good things for mental well-being. And it's been shown to do a lot of other good things. Like for example, it can reduce inflammation. So I have been incorporating Tulsi into my daily life and I'm loving it. So I'm growing four Tulsi plants because they're beautiful. They're really easy to grow. And I've been making iced Tulsi tea and it's so good. Like it actually tastes good. I crave it. And I feel like this has actually been a big one for reducing my stress. I can almost feel it just a few hours later. Maybe it's placebo, but if it's working, I'm happy. And now for our seventh and final remedy, which is probiotics. But not all probiotics, just some specific strains it looks like. For example, one study found that taking a specific strain of probiotic improved cortisol levels, so reduced cortisol levels, improved feelings of stress, and mental abilities essentially at eight weeks of taking it and also inflammatory things in your body. So the hormones essentially that signal you to create inflammation were reduced by taking this probiotic after eight weeks. Interestingly, they also found that it improved a bunch of cognitive functions, so your ability to think, like paying attention and having better memory. And there's a big review on a bunch of studies that found that taking certain strains of probiotics reduced your cortisol and other biological indicators of stress. And again, another meta-analysis of seven studies found that certain probiotic strains reduce stress. So there's a lot of evidence from a lot of different studies that certain bacteria types can really reduce your stress. And the reason for this is because the bacteria in your gut can really affect your brain and your whole body essentially. Like they actually can produce a lot of the neurotransmitters in your brain. And some ways to get probiotics in your life is you can take supplements. So you can get the specific strains that help with stress or you can get a mix with multiple. Or what I've been doing actually is to add vegan kefir or yogurt to my smoothies. So if you haven't heard of it, Kefir, which I might be pronouncing wrong, I'm not sure. Kefir is just liquid yogurt, essentially. So you, there's a lot of good vegan yogurts out there. I've just been adding those to my smoothies in the morning. Taking probiotics is really good for all sorts of things in your body. Like it can help with a lot of stuff. So definitely recommend giving it a try. So my recommendations, if you're just wanting to reduce your stress a little bit, just kind of experiment with it and not get too serious with buying stuff, I would recommend starting with the tea because tea is really cheap. You've probably had it before. And also the probiotics because those have been widely studied to be good for a lot of different things. Next, I would recommend the Tulsi and Lemon Balm because those are also cheap to get and they make a delicious tea. And then if you really want to reduce your stress and have something that's pretty potent, I would go for the adaptogens, uh, ashwagandha and rhodiola rosea. And of course there's chocolate. So if you love chocolate anyway and it won't get in the way of your health or body goals, then you should definitely just try eating more chocolate if it's dark chocolate. And the number one thing I do, besides my probiotics in the morning, is I make a de-stressing cocktail, as I'm now calling it, where I make green tea, where I add Tulsi from my plant, plus lemon balm from my other plant. So I have a green tea, which reduces stress through L-theanine, and then I add the Tulsi, which is an adaptogen and tastes freaking amazing, and then I add the lemon balm, which is another great stress reliever and also tastes really good. So definitely recommend mixing and matching these remedies. I think... If you really have a lot of stress to deal with, or you think you're going to have a lot of stress to deal with, you'll probably need more than one remedy. And some of them do take some time to kick in. You can check out my blog post for all the details on exactly how much you should take and how long each one seems like it'll take to start working. And it's important to note that stress and anxiety are very similar, but they're not the same thing. So in this video, I'm talking about supplements that reduce subjective feelings of stress. But if you have anxiety, like general anxiety disorder that you'd be diagnosed with, of a psychiatric illness, I'm actually gonna make a separate video on some remedies that can help reduce anxiety symptoms. And also I'm thinking of making a follow-up video to this one on lifestyle remedies for stress. So like things you can do, not just foods and herbs and supplements you can eat. So if you're interested in either of those videos, please let me know in the comments and subscribe to keep up. So I hope this could help you and I would love to hear your experiences. So 
please feel free to comment below if you've tried any of these things, if they work for you, and if you have any other questions or videos you'd like me to do. Would love to hear from you. You guys are awesome. So if you like this video and want to see more videos on remedies and weight loss and health and all sorts of good stuff for you that are based on science, just press the subscribe button below. I would really appreciate it. And if you really, really want to support me, head on over to my Patreon. Just a dollar or two a month could really help me out because I am a poor grad student. And thank you to those of you who vote on my Instagram polls deciding what videos to make next because it really helps me to know what you guys want to see because that's why I make videos because I want to help you. So thank you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.